Hi, this is Ken Johnson for another episode of SetCast. This tutorial marks our 8th episode in our OWASP Top 10 for Rails series. This tutorial will discuss cross-site request forgery or CSERF. I've trained a lot of Ruby on Rails developers and this is one of those areas I feel is both poorly understood and there certainly are some misconceptions about how Rails CSERF protection works. We're going to dive right in and show you how this attack works, how Rails tries to protect endpoints from this attack, and explain common mistakes that leave your application vulnerable to CSERF. Let's get started. We're going to demonstrate how an attacker might go about attacking a user with CSERF. To summarize what is going to happen, I'm the attacker and I want to review how an account update page request is formed. I want to capture the request for it and make an HTML form that replicates the request I've just made. I'll save the HTML code which will replicate an account update request to a file named test.html file. Now normally we might email a link or embed this HTML code in a discussion forum on some insecure third party site or something like that. that, that that's how we would attack a victim. However, for demonstration purposes, our victim will just simply click on this test.html file. The trick is, our browsers listen very well. If they are told to make a request, they will. And following the same origin policy, they'll also send whatever cookies we might have available for whatever site we are requesting. The trick is, did a person mean to make that request? Or was this code that executed a request on the user's browser's behalf? It's hard to tell if you're an application. You only get a request. Obviously, we wouldn't be talking about CSERF protections if there wasn't something you can do about it. But for now, let's concentrate on the attack portion of this. Our administrative account currently uses a password of admin1234 in order to authenticate to the site. As you can see from the administrative functionality and the welcome message, that password and username combination allows us to successfully authenticate as you'd probably expect. Our goal as an attacker is to change this administrative user's password to a value we've defined. Our attacker will enter in a password, submit the request, and catch the request in our intercepting proxy. If you are unfamiliar with an intercepting proxy, it is software that allows us to catch and modify our own HTTPS requests before forwarding those requests onto a web application. And yes, it does work with SSL. We'll want to remove anything we aren't interested in modifying. So email, first and last name, those details are removed. We'll also need to change our user ID from five to one. This is the user we'd like to attack. We're going to leverage a tool in our intercepting proxy which takes a request and generates HTML code used to recreate this request. So this is the HTML code. Note that we'll also remove the authenticity token. This application has disabled CSERF protection and so an authenticity token is not necessary. As the administrative user currently authenticated to RailsGoat, we'll click this test.html file and submit the request. Again, I want to reiterate, normally the administrative user would not click on a test.html file. Instead, they would most likely receive a link in their email or visit a site that has this code embedded in its source. Now we'll log out and log back in. Let's try our credentials again. As you'd imagine, these credentials no longer work. The attacker had us initiate a request to change our password to test test. So let's try that password. As you can see by our simulated CSERF attack, the browser simply follows instructions and makes a request, sending with it the administrative user's cookies. This is the basic premise of a CSERF attack. Initiate a request on behalf of a victim's browser, ideally without the victim knowing they've made the request. If you haven't read this blog post by John Poulin, I'd highly recommend doing so. It breaks down CSERF protection incredibly well, it's very detailed, and explains the chain of execution that occurs when CSERF protection is invoked. A very solid read. I'll summarize for this video, however, and leave the link under the resources section. The basic premise is that when CSERF protection is enabled and an unverified request has been detected, meaning a possible CSERF attack, 
the session object is reset. There are no other actions performed by this filter. That's all it does. No redirections, no further action taken, just reset the session object. Take that into account when we discuss common mistakes. An unverified request means that an authenticity token was either invalid or missing. The idea is the user has to visit a page to receive a form that has this token embedded in it. Then they make a request. It would be strange if the request just came through without any prompting. Obviously, it's an imperfect system to some degree because APIs and web hooks don't necessarily want to invoke CSERF protection. Still, when used properly, it's a great deterrent that will frustrate any attacker attempting to perform CSERF against your users. Now, although we've commented out Protect from Forgery, this comes enabled by default when you create a Rails application. It is implemented at the application controller level, so any controller that inherits from that application controller has this filter automatically applied to it unless modified not to. It is important to separate controller from view when you talk about CSERF. The code responsible for generating views will always generate a CSERF token when you leverage Rails form builders such as Form4 or Form Tag. This will happen regardless of whether or not CSERF protection is applied at the controller level. So just because you see that an authenticity token is being passed in a request, do not um, automatically assume that CSERF protection is enabled or enforced. We're looking at the account update page here, the view code. You can see we leverage Form 4 to build this form and we've assigned it an ID of account edit. This is important as we'll show the JavaScript code that initiates an AJAX request here in a second. Let's view the source of the page generated by this view code. You can see we have the account edit ID, so we're looking at the right form. What you'll also notice is that without any prompting from us, the form automatically added a hidden input for the authenticity token. Other frameworks like Django require you to do this manually on a per form basis. Rails was nice enough to handle it for you. In order to get the entire contents of this form, including the hidden CSERF token or authenticity token, we'll call serialize on the account edit form and submit those form fields to the data portion of this AJAX request. So again, the view generates an authenticity token automatically. Controllers validate based on conditions at the controller level. And even when making AJAX requests, you can include this authenticity token. There are two common ways in which developers shoot themselves in the foot. Match routes and not understanding how protect from forgery works. Let's first demonstrate match routes. If you're not familiar, match routes are a way to make a route reachable over both get and post requests. Remember, Rails does not perform validation of a CSRF token unless it receives an HTTP post request. We've set up a match route for the update action inside the user's controller. This means I can either send a get or post request to this endpoint now. To demonstrate this concept in action, let's change my first name from Ken to Kenny. Here you see that we have a post request. We'll forward that post request to our repeater tool and forward on the request to the application. As you can see, my profile has been updated. We'll navigate to repeater so that we can send this request again. However, this time we're going to switch this POST request to a GET request. Since this is a GET request, we won't need that authenticity token. And we won't need to send the PUT method parameter either. Now let's go ahead and convert this to a GET request. We'll switch the first name parameter from Kenny to this is a test and send the request. It appears everything worked as normally. Let's go back to the application and check. The first name value is now this is a test indicating a successful change using a GET request. To drive this point home, you can clearly see that we do in fact have CSERF protections enabled, but the application basically doesn't care because we sent a GET request. Now, I know by default in Rails 4, match routes aren't allowed, or at least I didn't attempt to implement them any further after having received an exception stating this behavior isn't allowed. If there is a way to bypass this or I am wrong, please leave a comment in the comments section. Let's talk about that other thing I mentioned, not understanding how CSERF protection works. Remember how I mentioned that the Rails CSERF mechanism kills the session object when an unvalidated request is detected? 
Well, that's really all it does. So you must have a controller filter that relies upon the session object. Otherwise, the request will still execute. Yes, let me say that again. The action will still execute using the request if you do not have an authentication style filter that relies upon the session object. To demonstrate this concept, we have a fake mail service using the mail catcher gem. We'll attempt to reset our password. We should receive an email. And we do. We'll clear our inbox out before moving on. Let's try this again, but this time we'll remove the authenticity token from the request in transit to the application. As you can see, the request was successful, and if we look at our mailer service, we have a reset password email. When you inspect the controller, and based on the information I've just provided, it's easy to see why. In this controller, we chose to skip the authenticated before filter. You'll notice that the authenticated method calls current user. If the current user does not exist, your session is reset and you are redirected. Now, what does current user rely upon? Well, it relies upon the session object. Although it also relies on the cookies as well, and that could be problematic for CSERF protections. Now, clearly, this is an unauthenticated function, and so we're not super concerned about CSERF protection, but the point is that this happens. Filters are skipped or applied improperly, and something other than the session object is used pretty frequently based on the applications I've reviewed. Okay, so to recap, we've demonstrated a CSERF attack, we've discussed how Rails CSERF protection works, and we've shown you scenarios where this protection does not work and what to look out for. I'm Ken Johnson. This has been another episode of SecCast. Thanks for watching.